Hey everyone, this is Vinaji2 here. Uh, going to be making this video real quick. Um, right now it is 12.44 a.m. on the East Coast. And technically right now it is Turkey Day. So for those people, whenever you watch this video today, I want to say Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I hope you all have a really great Thanksgiving. I hope you all eat a lot. I know I'm definitely going to be. Got to get ready for hibernation. <laughs> But, uh, you know, also be thankful for what you got. I mean, people are always saying, you know, they don't got what they want. Well, you got to think of, you know, in reality, I mean, there's some people in the world that don't got nothing. So you got to be considerate about that and think, you know, hey, I do got something compared to some of these who have nothing. And, you know, we got to be thankful for what we got. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still not, I've not been feeling great for the past two weeks. I've got bronchitis, so... If I cough a lot during this video, I'm apologizing. I'm just you know, not been feeling well lately. <coughs> Man, I sound like a smoker. But anyways, uh, it's time to get this video started. Title up above. It's going to be what the topic is about, so let's get to it. So yeah. Remember this time last year when the Minnesota Vikings were the second best team in the NFC, one of the best teams actually in the NFL. Um, they only had like one loss at this time of the season. Uh, people were saying that that was the only team that could beat the New Orleans Saints, who at this time was undefeated. You know, people were really giving them a shot. And personally, myself, I thought they could do it too. And many people. Uh, you know, they're saying Brett Favre was at his prime. He was doing better than ever, and it showed statistically he was doing, having one of his best seasons ever in his 20-year career. And, you know, people were really, really happy that he was back to his old former since now when he went to the Jets, you know. He wasn't treated right from the get-go, in my opinion, and he just didn't have a good season. But, you know, first year with the Vikings, excellent. Made it to the conference title game in the NFC lost there in overtime and you know Brett did retire well he said he was going to came back and this year has not been a really really good season for Brett Favre uh, he's really had a very very bad season um, let's see like they're three and seven now very unlikely of making the playoffs this year. I mean, it's still possible, but very, very slim. You know, he's thrown more interceptions and touchdowns this year. He's not had the best season. You know, it's just, it's just not been really good this year at all. And many people, I mean, that just this past week they released their head coach, Brad Childress. So, you know, Brad's not been very popular lately in uh, Minnesota. You know, a lot of controversy going on with him. And players, you know, players did not like him at all. And, you know, Brad Childress is gone. And now they have uh, Leslie Frazier in as the interim coach. And, uh, you know, many people are really thinking, you know, how much does Brett got left in the season? He's been hurt every game, obviously. He's hurting his ankles and his shoulders. And it's obvious. I mean, we can pretty much say this is going to be the last season of Brett Favre being in the NFL. Has to be. If he comes back, it's going to be really, really shocking. Since oh, this is definitely, this is definitely like in a way, not a good season. Actually, it's really, really horrible of his. So if I was him, you know, this year, hang it up. But many people right now, even though we are in week 12 of the NFL 2010 NFL season, people are even thinking, hey, why don't you just, you know, cut him right now and give either Joe Weber or Zavaris Jackson a shot at quarterback to see how the futures are going to go. Now I read this article the other day ago. And it was uh, um, NFL analyst Mike Mayock of uh, NFL Network. I'm pretty sure y'all have heard of him before. Uh, let me just read like this little thing off real quick. Uh, this is one thing that Mayock had said. He said, at this point, you fired your coach, Mayock said. It would be a crime if you don't find out in the remainder of the season whether or not either one of your backup quarterbacks can play. If I was there... I'd like to see a uniform situation within the organization where the owner, the new head coach, and head of personnel, Rick Spielman, sit down and say, it's time to release Favre. 
we need to get a clean look at these two young quarterbacks, in which would be in Joe Webb and Tavares Jackson, and find out if either of them is our quarterbacks of the future. If that's the case, then you know what we have to get in the draft. So, Mayock really brought up a pretty good point, and you know, brought up one that was really, you know, something that people can have a big conversation about. Should they release Brett Favre? Well, it's like this. Either way, you know, with this bad season, Brett Favre is an excellent quarterback. He'll be a Hall of Famer. Definitely a first ballot, in my opinion. And others' opinions as well. He's a really great quarterback. One of the best to ever put on a helmet and cleats. Really, really good. I mean, he's excellent. He got. He has a lot of determination and leadership. I mean, he's he's a very, very good quarterback. You know, with the exception of this season. But Brett has. You know, 20 plus years under him, he's 40 years old now, I believe. And, you know, most players these days, they don't play till 40. They don't play 20 plus years unless, you know, you're a kicker or a punter. So, you know, Brett's really lucky to be going this far in his career in the NFL so far. So, that's pretty good so far. But, should he get released now? My opinion, no. But this is what they should do. You want to see young talent in Tavares Jackson and Joe Webb. I agree. Because those two quarterbacks can be really, really potential field and can do really well in the NFL. Both of them, I think, can possibly start. More likely Tavares. That's how Tavares has started before. Joe Webb, possibly, if he goes to another team. But I honestly think that this is what they should do with Brett Favre, you know, He's been there longer, you know, many people don't want to see, you know, his 250-plus games that he started consecutively, you know, in. I mean, many people, I'm not going to lie, I wouldn't want to. But, uh, you know, just start him for maybe, like, you know, have him play, like, the first quarter, maybe even the first half, you know, see how he does. If he's not doing well, take him out, put in Tavares or Joe Webb, you know, just do that for the rest of the season. You know, if, even if he's hurting, you know, even if he's doing well, but if he's hurting, like, a lot, you know, take him out, put in the other two quarterbacks, you know, whoever you choose, and see what you can work with. Because, I mean, it's obvious, you know, his days are numbered in the NFL. His days are numbered in the Vikings organization. So, might as well just keep him going, you know, ha let him have fun while he's got it, you know, let him keep starting, at least, you know, play at least the first quarter or two and you know, these last few games. Because, uh, you know, obviously his his career is ending this year. Uh, it has to be, because if not, then it's going to be the stupid decision that Favre would be able to make if he decides to come back. <coughs> so, hopefully uh, Favre, you know, the organization of the Vikings can just do that with Favre, because it's just, um, you know, they. I agree with the fact, hey, you got to, test out these young players so you can see what you got next year for the next season because right now if I was the Vikings I would not be worried about this season. I'd be like hey you know let's try to win as many games as we can but you know let's not stress about it if we don't win because you know more games you lose better draft pick you get and you, know, you can get better players possibly even a quarterback if you have to rely back on that if Tavares and Joe does not you know do well. But either way, uh, <coughs> they got to really, uh, they got to really uh, test out both qu quarterbacks, you know, the younger ones, and let Favre rest a little bit. I mean, they don't want the guy getting killed out there. I mean, Favre's been getting beaten up for the past 20 years, and this year he's really taken hard hits from a lot of people. And <coughs> gosh, I apologize for coughing. But, uh, you know, just need to do it with Favre. I need to do that with them because, you know, the they don't want to, I mean, if it was my way, I wouldn't release him. But I'd say, you know what, Brett, you've had a really long career. You've done well. You're a Hall of Fame quarterback, that's for sure. 
we're just going to let you, you know, play like, a, you know, start the first quarter or two, and then we're going to, you know, see how our younger talent's going to be because we got to have some new face for the organization at quarterback in the future. We know that you're not going to be hanging around so at much longer. So that's what I'd do if I was, you know, the leader of an organization, but people got their own different ways and whatnot. But uh, hopefully, you know, Brett season picks it up around, but and I hope they don't release them because that would not be the right way to go out, in my opinion. I mean, at least, you know, just let them go out with a victory, hopefully in the last game of the year and have a pretty decent season from here on out. Because, <coughs> gosh, I'm mighty. Because from here, <coughs> oh, my God, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm coughing a lot. Y'all going to, I know it's irritating, but, yeah. Let's just hope that uh, Brett cannot be cut. I mean, let's hope he just continues on for the rest of the season. Because no, nobody would want to see him cut, in my opinion. That wouldn't be the right way to go out. Just let him, you know, finish off this year and then, you know, let him decide what he's going to do afterwards. So, yeah, I mean, just keep him on there, you know. Let him start the first half, at least, or at most, whatever. And, you know, let the younger talent see what's going to be the future held for the Minnesota Vikings organization. And uh, hopefully, uh, Brett season will pick it up along with the Vikings. But, you know, the Vikings are... Like I said, they should be more focused on which draft pick now they should get instead of worrying about winning all the games. Though they should be also worrying about, you know, finishing off the season strong on getting all, you know, as much wins as they can here in these remaining games. So, you know, that's what I think that's what should happen for now. And, you know, tell me what's your opinions on this whole situation and what's going on in the NFL, what they should do with Brett Favre. I hope you all enjoy the game that's going to be played today, might as well just say, on Thanksgiving week, and uh, hope you all have a really great Thanksgiving, and eat a lot, and have fun, and spend time with family, uh, that's the real deal, everyone, God bless y'all, hope you have a really great day, happy Thanksgiving, y'all, peace out.